Namaste. Before we start with the session for today, here are two reminders. Please keep your phones on silent, and if you require a bottle of water or notes, it's available at the back. Yesterday, we had two very insightful sessions. Today, we shall commence with session three. Hindu organization reaching the unreached areas. Now I would like to invite the panel for today's session. Sri Saumitra Gokhale, Global Coordinator for the Hindu Swayam Sevak Sangh USA. Bhakti Vignanya Goswami, Guru and Leader in the ISKCON Movement Russia. Srivas Das Vanachari, Director of Bhakti Vedanta Academy for Culture and Education, West Africa, Ghana. Bhakti Rakshasa Swami, Foundation Bhagavata Dharma, South America. Sri Samitra Gokhale is the global coordinator for the Hindu Swayam Sevak Sangh, a movement that promotes practicing of Hindu values for the well-being of humanity. After getting a master's degree in engineering in 1995, he became a RSS Pracharak in Bharat. Later, he moved on to work with the HSS. Based in the United States, he travels worldwide for the work of Hindu society and humanity. Samitra is on the advice Advisory Board of Seva International, a Hindu faith-based humanitarian, non Hindu faith-based humanitarian nonprofit and international center for cultural studies, an organization that facilitates the re revitalization of diverse ancient traditions and cultures of the world. Now I would like to hand over to the chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Navantika. Namaste and warm welcome to the first session of the second day of the World Hindu Congress. This is Swami Chinmayananda Hall and the Hindu Organizations Conference. <coughs> yesterday we had two parallel sessions. Today we are going to have more than yesterday. Since yesterday we have been hearing about how our dharma, our culture, our spiritual traditions, how we need to reach out, how we need to spread, how we need to expand. And this panel is exactly about it. Some of the sessions we spoke about the challenges that our society faces, but this particular panel, the session, is about what is our inherent strength through which we can reach out and we will hear about some success stories. These success stories are something that actually make us really, really feel very, very proud. When we hear about Swami Vivekananda going to the West, when Bharat was under the British rule and through his speech, through his teachings of Vedanta, he could win the hearts in the West and made disciples and started the Vedanta societies. Whether it is later on many Swamiji's who went, many Yoga Charyas who went, whether it is Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, whether it is Srila Prabhupada, and now even so many spiritual leaders who go, the amount of eagerness, interest that is there worldwide is mind-boggling. Because our philosophy, our dharma, our spiritual traditions, the vast knowledge base and the depth of spirituality, the world is hungry for it. If we reach out with our, with our spiritual practices and traditions, definitely there are people who are thirsty for it. And hence, there are several success stories where people who are not born in the Hindu family, they are adopting these traditions and they are getting that kind of tremendous transformation. The story of Srila Prabhupada itself is so inspiring, where this great bhakta of Sri Krishna goes after retirement in his late 60s and starts with hippies on the streets of New York 
and brings about a 180 degrees transformation in their life. And like that there are so many stories from then until now. I think that is our inherent strength because our philosophy is universal. It is for entire humanity and for human being in totality. Not this aspect or that aspect of human personality. Whether it is through bhakti, whether it is through jnana traditions, whether it is through seva, we can reach out and we can add value to human life. Now these great personalities have done it, but how can everybody, the entire Hindu society and anybody who practices it, how can we do it? What are the ways to reach out? How can we really reach out to those who have not been exposed to these ideas, those who have no clue about these traditions and practices, how can we reach out to them? What are the practical ways of doing it? Today's panel, all the three speakers are well experienced in exactly this. All of them, they have adopted these traditions and not only that, now they are reaching out and spreading to more and more people so that it adds value to their life. It is not about conversion, it's about transformation. It is about understanding our true self and to be or get the consciousness level higher, more Godwardly. And hence, we would like to learn from our esteemed panelists today how they have done it, how they have reached out to those who have no clue. Although I would like to say from my own experience that wherever you go around the world, you will find people, common people. They may not be very learned and knowledgeable, very well educated, but they have respect and appreciation from anything that comes from Bharat, from Hindus. I always tell this one example which I will quote and then I will introduce this first speaker. When I went to a place called uh, Guatemala in the city, uh, uh, country of Guatemala, a small city, and there we had a conference and all of us we were in the Bharatiya Vesh dress and we went out on the streets there. People there who speak only Spanish, they were looking at us, somebody was saying Namaste, somebody was saying Hare Krishna, somebody Om Shanti. Just by looking at us, they were appreciating us. A man who was sitting in front of a shop, shirtless, and he was sitting and he was saying something in Spanish. I thought because look, we were foreigners in that country, he's maybe making fun of us, saying something funny about us. So I asked, what is he saying in Spanish? So he says that thousand respects to India, he was saying in Spanish. So like that, that is the kind of, oops, yeah, that is the kind of respect and appreciation people around the world have about us. So now let us go directly to the panel and we would like to hear from all of them about how they have reached to people and made difference in their lives. What we have today is geographically, all of them have worked in different parts of the world. One of our panelists has worked especially in Russia and the erstwhile Soviet Union countries that have come out of that one speaker especially in West Africa and one speaker in South America. So it is a you know, wide spread of geography that we will cover today and we will hear their experiences. So I'd like to uh, introduce our first speaker today, Bhakti Vijnana Goswami is a Hindu sannyasi, guru and a leader in the ISKCON movement. He has been practicing and preaching Bhakti Yoga since the 1980s. He has been leader of ISKCON, the International Krishna, uh, Society for Krishna Consciousness, communities in Russia and other former Soviet Union countries for over two decades. He annually travels to Bharat and several other countries introducing people to the science of Bhakti Yoga 
before joining the monastic order bhakti vijnana goswami was a chemical sciences scholar with a phd in molecular biology bhakti vijnana goswami has written books in russian on the bhagavad gita spiritual transformation the structure and philosophy of religious systems and healing nature of prayer so without further ado i would like to call upon bhakti vijnana goswami to make his presentation thank you namaste so i will tell uh, a little success story as uh, the our uh, chairperson <coughs> introduced it uh, we will speak about the spreading of sanatan dharma in uh, former soviet union and the countries of former soviet union <coughs> the whole story started in 1971 when shila prabhupad came for just 5 days visit and during this visit he planted the seeds which gave such a crop uh, nobody could imagine at that time now the hundreds of thousands of people follow sanatan dharma inspired by his books and his example so <clears throat> i will tell little bit about uh, the success in russia ukraine kazakhstan uzbekistan and other former soviet countries some of which are predominantly muslim countries <clears throat> in the beginning after prabhupad's short visit in 71 there was a period of uh, severe persecution from the government uh soviet government was very atheistic and any followers of religion would constitute a threat to the whole government so you can see uh the result of it many uh early devotees were put in prison uh two of them died uh, many were put and tortured in psychiatric hospitals they went through enormous uh challenges uh nothing was allowed everything was strictly underground nevertheless the movement was spreading uh gradually 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 and uh, when the perestroika came when gorbachev came in power in 88 uh, iskon was the first religious organization officially registered in russia uh after many many years after second world war uh, basically so we went to uh india for the first time and uh, the public uh harinams uh were allowed and at that time we started spreading message of bhagavad gita you can see the trolley bus uh with the uh, advertisement of bhagavad gita as it is since that time uh, we distributed a lot, around uh, 7 million bhagavad gitas in russian language so but uh this initial period of enthusiasm uh, followed uh by a very difficult period when the uh, traditionally minded people started uh persecuting uh the new hari krishna movement which was branded as a cult and which was uh considered as a new religious movement we were trying to show our roots but uh of course uh, without any success because the people had their set up ideas and the main challenge was from the uh, traditional religious organizations and uh, also government which was closely associated with these traditional organizations so we had numerous uh, challenges uh, perhaps you have heard that uh, in 2012 there was a court case against bhagavad gita and uh, russian government wanted to ban bhagavad gita as a terrorist book uh, in russia <laughs> uh we successfully uh, fought this uh uh court case but of course the help from bharat was very important uh, 
I represent the global ISKCON, which is uh, actually uh, all over the world. And I, I always felt that this connection with Bharata and our friends and, uh, and uh, devotees in uh, Bharata is very, very important. So we went through this difficult period only because of this political help. We met uh, at that time with Atali, Atal Bihari Vajpai and even Narendra Modiji came to our temple in Moscow. So then, you know, initially the land was given for the temple in Moscow, was taken away, given again, taken away. Uh, the community was demolished in Almaty, uh, Kazakhstan, and in Turkmenistan, Iskon was banned temporarily. So there was a lot, a lot of challenges during this period, but ultimately we survived. And that's the glory of Sanatan Dharma. As yesterday was said that ultimately we are for victory, for victory of Dharma. And here is the success. This is one of the temples in Russia, in Vladivostok and Far East, near Japan. Uh, so now there is around 120 centers in Russia, 70 temples, and more than uh, 100,000 followers in Russia alone. In Ukraine, there are 60 centers, 20 uh, temples, uh, 40,000 uh, followers. In Central Asia and Caucasus, which is uh, predominantly uh, Muslim population, there is, again, 31 center and three temples uh, and thousands of followers as well. So, again, without going into details, what I want to stress here is that uh, the appeal of Sanat Dharma is universal. And the whole uh, story which I'm telling about is the proof of it. So many people are interested in uh, Sanat Dharma without knowing that they're interested in Sanat Dharma. Because this is Sanat Dharma, because this is something which is internal to the soul. Uh, and therefore, there is a great deal of interest so far in Russia alone, we distributed 13 million books, uh, 5 million Bhagavad Gita's only, and uh, also the sets of Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, this is Narendra Modiji in our Moscow temple. You can see him. He was sent uh, directly by Atal Bihari Vajpayee at that time. Uh, in Ukraine, you see this magnificent temple. Uh, this is right in the center of Kiev, uh, and uh, uh, it's well established in uh, uh, Ukraine. Here you see what devotees are doing during the war. You all know that there is a bloody war going on between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, totally, uh, anyway, I will not make any political comments to this. Uh, but this is the devotees that distribute food in the bomb shells. Uh, uh, there is m m millions of plates of uh, prasadam distributed during this war time because we are with the uh, people in uh, different uh, cities. And this is in Samarkand. Uh, uh, you can see the madrasa uh, on the background where we have uh, public harinam and uh, so many people are taking part in it. This is also in Central Asia, the Harinam, and people are actually very receptive, even though by background they are Muslims, they are very open-hearted in these countries, and they eagerly accept yoga, Ayurveda, and all, all, all these Vedic sciences which are there. So, two minutes, okay. <laughs> so what we are doing, <laughs> we are doing a lot of festivals, uh, we all know that uh, actually uh, the whole religion of uh, religion or Sanatan Dharma is a very, you know, festival like uh, performance. So there are, uh, in just one year, we had around 500 festivals in different countries. And of course, educational programs. 
what we need and what we feel is very essential is that to people easily accept uh, Vedic culture, but uh, it's a uh, uh, need of the day to uh, make them go deeper into it. So we have ashramas and educational programs. And of course we have social programs, socially oriented programs with millions of uh, food distributed uh, uh, meals. And this is the amount of Bhagavad Gita distributed to the uh, date, 7 million uh, 267,000 uh, something. Bhagavad Gita, we count every Bhagavad Gita which is being distributed. And uh, the main idea is uh, to have to develop more uh, through the interest of people in yoga and Ayurveda and everything else to develop uh, this immersion. And therefore, we are also trying to make a center in Bharat where we would invite the followers of Sanat Dharma for deeper educational programs. And of course, as usually, we need the support, political support from Bharat, because without this political support, it would be very difficult to survive in this hostile, politically hostile environment. So my appeal to all of you is to uh, try to uh, provide uh, this support. Uh, and of course, the. A uh, success story was the Bhagavad Gita case. Uh, we would not be able to win the case if it was not uh, supported from uh, Bharat so unanimously. So that's a little story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bhakti Vignana Goswamiji. So because we are Working for dharma doesn't mean that there will not be challenges, but through endurance, through determination, and we can overcome those. The challenges come from repressive regimes, maybe, and from some other forces, but the people really want it. So if we reach out to them, the success is there. A wonderful story from Bhakti Vignan Goswamiji. We will go to uh, the next speaker, Srivas Das Vanachari ji, joined ISKCON in 1981. Initiated in 1983 by His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj, he graduated from Mayapur Institute for Higher Education and GBC College for Leadership Development in Mumbai. Obtained a degree as Bhakti Shastri in Vedic Philosophy. Bhakti Vaibhava degree uh, in Bhag Bhagavata Puran in 2007. Currently, he has several responsibilities within ISKCON. He teaches Shastri courses in Mayapur and Vrindavan Institutes for Higher Education, Bhakti Vedanta Academy for Culture and Education, and he is the zonal supervisor for West Africa, and then several other bodies that uh, he is part of as executive members. Uh, in Western Africa and he has been traveling throughout that region uh, teaching and bringing people to this whole philosophy and culture. Uh, I would like uh, Srivas Das Ji to come in front of us and tell us his story and how he has been able to do it in West Africa. O Magyana Tamarida Sia, Gyanan Ganashala Kaya, Chakshu Romali Tamye Natasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pankum Lagayate Grim Yat Kri Patamahavande Sri Guru Dina Taranam Paramanam Madhavam Sri Chaitanya Ishuram Okanda Mandala Karam Vyaptaina Chara Charam Tatpadam dashitam yena tasmai sri gurave namaha. So first of all, I want to say thank you to the organizers of this very, very important program because this 
Hindu dharm, which we call Sanatana dharm, is very important for the world. Dharma means nature. Shri Prabhupada, our founder Acharya, he says, Dharma means eternal nature. The eternal nature of water is liquidity. The eternal nature of sugar is sweetness. So therefore, the eternal nature of the jiva, the soul, is service. And that service is meant for the pleasure of the supreme, our origin. So bringing people together to think of dharma, bringing people together to work towards dharma is very important because it brings out that important aspect of service to the supreme. In fact, the Bhagavad Purana says, Savayam pum shaparo dharma yato bhakti radok sanye ahaituki aprati hatha yayadma suprasis that the supreme goal, the supreme occupation, the supreme service, the supreme activity of everyone is to engage in the service of the Lord. So therefore, Dharma is important because this Dharma will allow us to reconnect with the supreme. And so his divine grace, Laesi Bhaktivedanta, uh, left the shores of India in 1965, and then he went to America. In 1966, he incorporated the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, popularly known as the Hare Krishna Movement. And this movement began to uh, expand. From the United States, it went to UK. From the UK, it spread to other European countries, and it went everywhere in the world. And today, we can say we have over 850 temples across the whole world. And that is the achievement that Srila Prabhupada has brought to the world. Um, Srila Prabhupada is actually the, uh, the, the greatest ambassador of this Hindu dharma or Sanatana dharma because he has created a family. He has created a house. He has created a unit that brings the whole world together. So we, we feel very happy to be here to present this wonderful um, achievement that His Divine Grace, Laisi Bhaktivedanta Swami, has done for the world. Uh, this is something different. So we have a number of temples in West Africa. Ghana, Nigeria, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, DR, Congo, Benin, Liberia, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Mauritius, Botswana, Malawi, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, and Zambia. All of these countries, uh, there are temples and there are devotees and so much of this culture Vedic culture, Vedic literature is being spread over the whole Africa. And I am sure that in the near future, we will have many more Africans taking to this process of Sanatana Dharma. In fact, I always say that Sanatana Dharma is the mother of all dharmas. Sanatana, the very literatures is the mother of all literatures. Why? Because we can see that even the 
in the Christian scriptures, you will find traces of very literature. For instance, they talk about the, 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 the Noah, the flood, Noah, and the ark. This is directly from the eighth canto of the Bhagavad Purana, of the Srimad Bhagavatam. In the eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 24, discusses Satya Vrata Maharaj and the Matsya Avatar. And so you see that this story is just picked from the Bhagavad Purana and then added to these books in the Bible. Similarly, if you ask many Muslims, why is it that we have the, the, the moon, the, the, the moon crescent on every mosque? Every masjid you see, there is a moon crescent on it. I've asked many Muslims, they don't understand. And I tell them, actually, uh, it signifies Lord Shiva, Bala Chandra. When Lord Shiva carried the moon because he had drunk halahala, the poison from the ocean of milk, and he was feeling dizzy, Chandra came to help him by sitting on his head. So we can see traces of Vedic literature. We can see traces of this Sanatana Dharma in all the religions throughout the world. That points to the fact that Sanatana Dharma is the mother of all religions. It is the mother of all literatures. And therefore, it is necessary that this kind of gathering can give momentum. It can help the whole world to come to accept this Sanatana Dharma as the, the prime religion, the prime philosophy, the prime activity of the living entities. In fact, in West Africa, there is great interest in vegetarianism. There is great interest in Indian music. There is great interest in Indian films, Indian dramas, Indian dresses, and even Ayurvedic medicine. So it is an opportunity for us to make inroads using these things. And the, the, the time is ripe for this gathering. And that is what I'm saying. This gathering gives momentum. All that we say is that we need more support in the form of books, in the form of um, resources, I will tell you one story. Many years back, we used to have a television program. OK, a television program. And when my spiritual master came to Ghana, I come from Ghana, we had a television program. And the head of state, late head of state, he saw this program. And he was attracted. So it was a Saturday to Saturday program. So the following Saturday, the head of state called the broadcasting house and he said that Hare Krishna program repeat it. So it was repeated. Then the following Saturday, the broadcasting was supposed to put up another program. The head of state called the broadcasting and said that Hare Krishna program repeat it. So it was repeated a third time. So the minister of information called the director of TV and said, why are you why are you repeating the Hare Krishna program over and over again? And the director of TV said, your boss instructed me. And he said, who is my boss? He said, the, the president. And the telephone went silent. He could not challenge it. Also, there was another president who took over from that president. He met us at the Indian High Commission. Uh, it was a celebration of Indian independence. And so he met the devotees there. And he just walked up to us and said, you people are doing a good job. I like the Indian philosophy. Please come to my office and let us share ideas. So the Sanatana Dharma is actually appreciated by intelligent class of people. And such gathering like this will give a lot of momentum so that we can spread this knowledge all over the world and let everybody understand that the duty of everyone is to be a servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And to conclude, um, the Gita Mahatmya says this, 
The Gita Mahatmya says, Ekam Sastra Devaki Putra Gitam. Let there be one scripture, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Eko Deva Devaki Putra Iva. Let there be one deity, the worship of Sri Krishna Bhagavan. Eko Mantra Tasya Manani. Let there be one mantra for the whole world. The Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then he says, Karma Pi Etam Tasya Devasya Iva. Let there be one work only, service to the Supreme Lord. And finally he says, Vasudeva Kutumba. Let there be one family under the authority of Vasudev. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Srivas Daji. So very happy to know that even in African countries, there is tremendous appeal for all these things, especially music, art, medicine. And one fact he mentioned about how when we reach out, we open people's eyes to the Vedic truth that exists in their own traditions. I think that is also a great way to reach out. Uh, our next speaker is originally from Europe but now lives in Mexico and travels within South America. Bhakti Rakshaka Swamiji had his first encounter with Hindu Dharma at the age of 18 upon reading the Bhagavad Gita as it is by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. <clears throat> he has since dedicated his life to hearing, studying and sharing the teachings of his spiritual preceptors. He continues to do so through travels between Bharat and various countries in Europe and in Latin America, bringing together people from all walks of life to realize shared ideals of service and universal love. He also offers services as editor, researcher, and speaker, along with spiritual accompaniment to students in the same tradition. I was just talking to Bhakti Rakshak Swamiji, and then I asked him that you are in Latin America, so do you speak Spanish? He says, of course. So he had to learn Spanish in order to go there and uh, do the teachings. So please welcome Bhakti Rakshaka Swamiji to sh uh, share his experiences in Latin America. Respected chairperson, speakers, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for <clears throat> giving me the chance here to make this presentation. A few weeks back, Swami Vigananda called me and said, we don't want to forget you, so please come. Because usually, you see, South America is far in the West and also far in the South. You know, it's not so much in the focus, generally. But nevertheless, there is a great interest for Sanatana Dharma. So I will make this short presentation going through achievements, challenges, and talk a little bit about our present efforts. Of course, first, when you speak about the area, it's very important to mention the social reality there. So it means, where are you going? What will you find there? And it's interesting, talking about South America, we have two extremes. On one side, we have situations which are very much favorable for our work, and on the other side, something which is completely disfavorable. Like the majority of people, speaking about the favorable part, are religious. If you go Monday to Sunday, morning, night time, the churches are full in many places. So people are religious. They like to hear about religion, about God. And not only that, they're also very much open. It means they can also hear from other traditions, unlike in some other places where they say, this is my religion, this is the only one. No, they listen. So this is very favorable. Also, the fact that religious freedom is guaranteed there by laws. 
and also that we encounter very few bureaucratic obstacles. It means when we want to do something, we apply for it, and usually we get all the permissions. No? On the other side, you know, the material poverty, which is widespread there, corruption on all levels of administration, and crime and violence, these are things which make everything difficult to establish and to make grow organizations. Just to give an example about crime, nine out of 10 most violent cities in the world are in Mexico. 38 out of 50 most violent cities in the world are in South America. So of course this environment can create many difficulties, especially related to property issues, related to security. We have lost several devotees by fulfilling their duty, even in the streets, they were killed, and many other issues which we had to encounter, also being put in jail without any accusations and so on. Stories long, I can tell you days about these stories. But nevertheless, you know, the movement has spread out. So nowadays we can speak about the achievements, which I've summed up here, that we can find temples and projects, preaching centers all around the continent. We have reached out not only to the major cities, but also into very remote areas. One time I was traveling to Ecuador and then in the Andes up in 3,000 meters, I was accompanied by some of my first travel. So I was worried about what we will do on the way. It's a long journey. We will take shower, we will take some prasad. No, no, no problem. Then we came and there was Govinda's temple on 3,000 meters in the Andes on the border between Colombia and... So into very remote areas, even into the areas of the indigenous Adivasi people, we have reached out there and we got a very good feedback. Like Mohan Bhagavad was telling yesterday, you know, what is their perception of Bharata? So they said, they feel some peace when they hear this. They see this is the wisdom is there, no? And of course, you no know, massive literature distribution has been going on over all these decades. I don't have the exact numbers now, but we have done this over all these years and systematically sometimes going village by village, groups of devotees. And also another achievement is that we won the sympathy of the people, like Sumutiji was telling in the street, they will stop you and say, Hari Om, Hare Krishna, just when, you, when they see you. So sympathy is there. And also recognition by the government means we are recognized as official religion in several of the countries in South America. Now, of course, doing things in this world, having some achievements means also to face some challenges. So I'm speaking here more in the organizational Term. And one of our big challenges now is we are trying to find a more autonomous community level. So over the five decades, we went through different periods, but it was mostly what we call the vertical organizational structure, means from up to down, which was at some time more institution oriented and at other moments more leader oriented. But both of these models, like fall short to give a healthy environment for a development of autonomous local communities, which we see. Because we had problems from people coming abroad, sent by the institution without understanding actually the social reality of the, of the place, or everything being focused on the leader, too much power concentration, which leads to corruption and to power abuse and so on. So now we are trying to find this other model of a more autonomous local community, which is a big challenge after 50 years working in one direction in a one way. No? Then another topic is creating cultural capital, which is a little bit difficult to understand for those born in Bharat and into this cultural environment, because in the places where we are, there is no cultural capital. So either, like Goswamiji was telling, either you join, or you are out, something like this. There is nothing in between to keep somehow a positive relation. So creating this cultural capital, it's also an issue which we can talk for days about, but it's one of our challenges. And also the recent years, the maintenance of temples has become a challenge also for us, especially the last three, four years. Because originally we had many full-time members 
and all the structures we have was created with book distribution. In the beginning, later on, we did some commercial activities, which was mostly informal, but it worked out to construct everything, to maintain everything. But now China, times have changed, so there are not so many full-time members anymore, and more restrictions are there, etc. So this is one of the challenges we are facing at present. But nevertheless, the efforts are there, we continue. <clears throat> So our traditional worship and missionary activities, this goes as usual. Temples are there, communities are there, but even sometimes if there is no temple, our activities go on because we are also known as a street religion, which has started in the streets, inaugurated by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and it has spread out through the streets. So this will always be there. But of course, we need the temples and the structures, the places where people can come, where we can give proper guidance and education. So, but this is going on. You know? Then one important part which we are focusing now, and interesting also to hear from other speakers, that they also discovered this area is very attractive for the people, is yoga, Ayurveda, Jyotish, to give to people some practical wisdom which they can apply in their life and see the benefit and then they get the appreciation for the, for the bigger picture of whatever we have to present. You know? Then diverse social activities, we have also entered into diverse social activities, means we participate in interreligious forums, we participate in non-governmental initiatives and also governmental initiatives to give our opinion, to give our contribution on topics like uh, justice and topics like uh, human rights, any other topic, no? So it's not, we are not all the time in our temples doing our worship, but we have to show also that what we have, the wisdom, is also very much relevant for, for the society at large. And in this time, we are looking for affiliation and support from organizations from Bharat, especially in this field of social activities in Vedic sciences, so to be taken more in serious, like to be backed up you know, from, from Bharat, from means from where all this message is coming from to the people who are very much, as I said, receptive, speaking about South America. Of course, when we hear about Russia and all these numbers like this, no one can compare, I would say, outside of Bharat with this, but South America is for sure very receptive for this. So if you allow me, just one, two minutes more. To show a few pictures, as it said, pictures speak, speak more than a thousand words, just to get some impressions. Like, for example, this is our temple in close to Bogota, which was inaugurated four years back after many years of work. Then this is our temple in Santiago de Chile, Gorangarada, Govinda Temple there. As I said, many, all the major cities, temples are there and also around. Our concept was to have the temple in the city and to have a farm project close to the city so that our members can also like go out and take people out to have this experience a little bit in a more peaceful environment and not always because problems we are facing certain people from certain areas of the city due to crime they don't go to any place they go to specific places and specific times so six o'clock they have to leave because it's dangerous to get back home and like this so we have this Conceptually, we thought like this, okay, we can take them outside the city and so on. Then here you see our activities, classical activities, Nagar Sankirtan, book distribution in the streets going on. And also, for example, here in front of a university in Medellin, Colombia, we just go sit down, people come and join, they sit and listen to a class of Bhagavad Gita under the tree. <laughs> then here you see Ratha Yatra festivals being celebrated in the major cities in South America. Then universities, we are present in the universities, going there, giving classes on different topics. Also here with Swami from our community in the command center of the National Police of Colombia. He's teaching there meditation, self-control, principles of righteousness, invited by them. They're very much appreciative of this also. Then here program of yoga, yoga festivals, which we have done over a longer period of time, every six weeks. 
and up to 6,500 people would come in one day to join this festival to get to know about <laughs> yoga. And here, our Casa Manu in Mexico, which is a place especially dedicated for all the social activities, for interreligious forums and what I've mentioned. So before we did everything under one roof, mostly in the temple. So we had the temple, the worship there, and the Indian boutique there, and we had the yoga school there, but we found out it's inappropriate to have everything under one roof. So we are splitting this now into different, physically and also institutionally. So this is also one of our challenges which we are going through. And yeah, time is over. So thank you much for your attention. I hope you can get some idea of what is going on there in South America. Thank you very much, uh, Bhakti Rakshika Swamiji. I'm reminded of um, how Steve Jobs has written about how he used to walk many miles to go to Hare Krishna Mandir to have this Sunday feast. So it does attract, Prasadam does att attract. Recently I was also in Mexico and went to a Shiva Mandir run by the disciples of one disciple in Ecuador who is the direct disciple of Mahavatar Babaji and her disciples in Mexico and uh, this is the most beautiful and most uplifting Rudrabi Shekam that I must have attended. It was a Monday evening and it was so beautiful the way it was conducted. All of them were you know, from Mexico and they were the ones who were conducting it the priests, the people who are performing is just most beautiful. So it is out there for sure. It's a great coincidence that today all the speakers, if you look at their names, one is Bhakti Vijnana Goswami, other is Sri Vasa Das, and the third one is Bhakti Rakshaka. So Bhakti is common, but Vijnan means higher knowledge, Das means willing and ready to serve, the Bhagavan, and if need be, defend, Rakshak, to defend and resist and overcome. I think that's how we will be able to not only sustain, but grow and spread. So there are many, many practical ways of doing it, but it takes a lot of efforts, tremendous determination, dedication, devotion, and that kind of tremendous efforts, all the three of them have shared. And there are numerous, countless others who are doing it all over the world. And such are our, uh, we can say, foot soldiers of dharma who are going and spreading it. Please give a big round of applause to all the three <laughs> panelists. Now for the next about uh, 15 minutes, we have the floor open for any questions. If you would like to ask any one of them or any per specific uh, speaker, uh, you can please uh, ask the question, but you know, as it is usually mentioned, please be brief uh, and ask the question directly so that we can have more number of questions answered. So we have, I've seen a hand up there and then a hand up there afterwards. Uh, the mic will be passed on. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, my name is Patri Das. I'm, it's okay. Uh, I am Patri Das. I came from Nepal. I am regional secretary for Nepal in Asia. And uh, I have just a small comment I really wanted to share with all of you, which is historical moment. As they say in Hindi, Dukme sumiran sab kare, sukme kare na koi, jo sukme sumiran kare, to tu kahe kahoi. To me personally, it's a little bit surprising Hindu conference con conducted in English. And ghar ka jogi jogra, bahar ka jogi siddh. And I can see it's amazing actually that by predictions of Vedas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predicted, Prithiviti Acheja Dinagar Gram Sarvatra Prachare Hobi Miramuranam. It is said that Hindu Dharma, Sanatan Dharma will be spread all over the world. And here we are, people sitting in front of you, Bideshi, all Bideshi. And I'm actually very, very much humbly proud to be part of your wonderful family, really. And in Nepal, the only country in the world supposed to be Hindu country, right? Yes, 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 question. That's, I really want to share. It's very important. Because the question is, how come is it possible? Only by bhakti. I know, I know very much. And that's, um, I wanted to put my uh, heart to glorify bhakti. Our, our venerable speaker, he spoke, actually, bhakti prevent everywhere. And I just composed poem. Not yesterday poem. He was, but not today, not today. It's about bhakti. Because we are all united by bhakti. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Bhakti resided in your heart like the nectar in the golden pot. You were very kind and smart, smart to spread the love of God. Through angry ocean had to cross. Two times got heart attack. So personally, Supreme Lord, your pot had to protect. So even single drop of nectar may never outspill. The ocean calm became and still by Lord Shri Krishna's will. By distributing nectar wide, you saved the world. You saved so many souls who were going life in worse. You helped us. Lord Govinda meet to you is our tribute. Let planet earth embrace your feet and offer you salute. So this is a, as he said, foot soldiers, they're going all over the world. This is a very important message. And I'm very proud to be part of this family. And uh, one more very important thing in Nepal, never ending peace and love. Now we have big ra rally that uh, disunited people, we are all disunited somehow or other all over the world and this conference uniting everyone, uniting everyone. And uh, thank you very much for being all of you here. And uh, last but not the least, at the end, we can share one realization also. Wonderful. Thank you very much. But uh, just uh, because this is a session, it has been planned, a lot of efforts have gone into this. And the speakers here have shared, we are here to learn more from, uh, you know, their experience. So let us keep it to that. I would really appreciate if we, we stick to questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, Deva Priyan from France. It was very interesting to see uh, what you had, all that you were saying about the official recognition from the different countries. And in France, the context is a little bit difficult because the relationship with religion is dense, generally speaking, and Hinduism is pretty still marginal in the religious field. And actually, there's been a very interesting initiative from the Indian embassy in France, and you were talking about the political supports that's very much uh, required in the beginning. Uh, and the Indian embassy actually reached out to many different Hindu organizations, asking them if they would come together to represent officially the Vedic tradition in France. So, there's eight organizations that have answered positively to this request. Now it's presided by uh, Swaminya Amrita Jyoti, who is representing Madam Rita Nandamay, because the other uh, organizations wanted that, but it's going to change. And I wanted to know if in the other countries there have been similar initiatives from Indian embassies to gather the different organizations together and organize a collective also discussion and representation of Hindu organizations towards governments. Thank you so much. Sure, I think it was a comment. Yes, please. So, yeah, okay. Hello, I'm Suvarna Upla. Uh, it was very enlightening uh, speeches from all of the uh, speakers from different countries. And we know about, like, in many countries they say we just believe in one God and we don't, uh, we discard everything else. So how much resistance you have faced in your respective countries? And I heard that there is a lot of criminal activities in some of the countries. So in such scenarios, do they attack our uh, people or do they attack who is from... We are trying to present Sanatan Dharma as a universal truth, which is beyond the sectarian, uh, sectarian uh, denominations. So usually people who oppose to us, uh, they are uh, opposing us from uh, using some dogmas. So we're fighting with the dogmas by uh, trying to explain to people the universal principles of spirituality. <clears throat> That's, of course, one approach, uh, but uh, uh, if it was only about the truth, it would be easy. Uh, the another approach is, of course, we need some political support. <laughs> Uh, the practice has proven that uh, when uh, the government uh, in a particular country uh, knows that uh, this movement is supported by uh, India, by Bharat, uh, that's very helpful. So, you know, that's very important and therefore you know, these two approaches are there from the point of view of truth and from the point of view of uh, mundane politics. Related to the same question, by the high crime, it, it depends who are the criminals. 
sometimes we just, you know, shut up and let them pass by. <laughs> and sometimes, well, we have to defend ourselves. And sometimes it goes really into, you know, serious confrontations also because they don't know any limits, no? They were just recently it happened that our deities from our temple in, in Bogota were stolen. <laughs> everything, everything was on camera like this, no? So, but fortunately after two years they came back again because we found them in another city. <laughs> So they cannot, but sometimes, you know, they will come with weapons, they will come, okay, then you just shut up, but sometimes we have even to, to defend our properties sure. and everything and legally, whatever means are necessary. <laughs> well, I can say in West Africa, and particularly Ghana, our greatest challenge is the fanatic Christians. Um, in the 90s, as I mentioned, there was a television program that they used to bring all different religions together and they would give a subject to be discussed. And so the Vedic literatures, the presentation from Sanantana Dharma always wins the day. In other words, it explains things so clearly and gives the, a better understanding of the situation. The people began to appreciate knowledge from the very literatures. And everywhere you, you went, people would say, oh, you, Hare Krishnas, you presented the best philosophy. We like your philosophy. So when the Christians, they began to hear these things, they were very disturbed. So they had to call a meeting of all the churches together. And they said, look, if we don't stop the Hare Krishnas, they will stop us. So, <laughs> so they had to contribute money to go and bribe the television station to stop that program. Because any time they brought different religions together, our presentation was always the best. We had solutions to all the problems we give a better understanding of the situation, and they didn't feel comfortable. So it has been our challenge. But fortunately, uh, now there are many television stations. Before, it was only one station, government station. And so when they bribed the people there, we couldn't have any access. But now there are many stations, and people are coming forward because they know that we have the philosophy. They know we have the practice. They know that we can help people. So they are coming to us. And we are having a field day. We are having nice programs. And gradually, we will take over the country. What they don't want, it will happen. Wonderful. Namaste. Yes. Namaste. I am Yogi Devaraj from Bengaluru, Bharat. We have been accredited to Government of India through Ministry of Ayush to teach yoga. We are interested in spreading yoga for health, happiness, and global peace. So anybody is interested, because Swamiji has said, we are prepared to affiliate, associate with anybody, anywhere in the world to spread yoga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would say kindly use the app to do the networking because then you can post there and you can get people who are interested. Yes, there and then here. Uh, yeah. Namaskar. Jai Shri Krishna. We have been living in Cambodia for 20 years. Our question is that we live there. No Hindu temple has been built there. Many people come to come and come. Bolte, my name is Swami Ram Kripananda. I am from South Africa uh, in Durban. I just want to ask uh, our Brother Srivas Das there, is that um, how many children um, is he working with? And because I've, uh, all three of you all will relate to what goes on in South Africa uh, with the crime and with the stealing of the murtis and, you know, those kind of things. It's happening all the time. But we don't focus too much on the negative because we want to take Sanatana Dharma to the children because... Uh, 
our countries um, go through violence because they were brought up like that. But our duty um, is to get into the grassroots to bring the Sanatana Dharma, the value of uh, love and compassion, uh, sacrifice to the kids. So I just wanted to know whether in Ghana you are working with the children because at our satsangs we have two, three thousand uh, black children that are attending, uh, they do Gita classes, they do yoga lessons, and we are feeding like four or five thousand people every day. So if, uh, are you working with the kids? I mean, this is where Africa sure. needs them. Sure. Sure. Thank you very much. Actually, um, uh, the children are the future. So if we invest in them, if we guide them and give them proper training, the future is bright. So in, in this regard, we, we actually have a school. We established a basic school, a primary school, next to the temple in Accra. And we provide education from class one to junior high school. And we, we, we teach a normal curriculum, government curriculum. But in addition to that, we also teach Krishna consciousness, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. So all the children that are passing through the gates of that school, they understand what is Sanatana Dharma. And then, Next is the temple, so they also come to the temple, they participate in the worship, and we provide free prasad and free lunch for them every day. So, 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 and the result is that in the district that we are, our school is always first. First in academics, first in sports, first in discipline, and first in many other things that a district council or the district education council, they're saying this Hare Krishna, they have something to offer. Because they can see that our children are properly trained. And so now we, we are thinking of how to expand because we only have one school. Why not two? Why not three? Why not four? Why not 10? So it covers the whole country and uh, we, can, we can deliver to many more communities. So we are trying to link up with other schools like uh, the Avanti School in London and other schools to get support so that we can expand throughout and do exactly what you're talking about. Thank Wonderful. you. I'm afraid this will have to be the last question and yeah. then it can continue after the session. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, Shandhananji, yes. Yeah. Namaskar. I'm, I'm very impressed about what is going on in the world. But there is one challenge that we need to uh, we are facing is that every time when I'm in the UN, the Hindus are not represented in the UN. That is the body that talks about us. And as you know, the Vatican had their own seat. The Pope speaks there. It's looked like that Hindus are not participating that. The challenge is how we can see that the Hindus get their recognition and also we speak there about global change, global warming and everything. And my second question is, Bhakti is very good, but are we also focusing on the biggest challenge that is coming now in the Kaljuk is the global warming, where are we all going to face the problem in the future? I think a uh, very good question, but I think this, uh, this topic of this panel is about reaching to the unreached. So one is the grassroots efforts, one is the grass top effort that you're talking about. So if anybody would like to respond, it's wonderful, but otherwise it is little beyond the scope of uh, the, the panel here. Thank you, Shuddhananji. Let's take that last, last one question. Penny, please, because everybody needs to hear, yes. Temples, I bow my head to Question, how come a common Hindu, a working class Hindu, a student can support you guys in a proper manner? Short term, mid term, and a long term. Please advise what a common Hindu should do to expand your uh, movement or, or support you. Excellent. I would, I would request uh, a, a 30 second response from each one of you on this one, please. Well, locally when they live, mm -hmm. they come to the local temple, they establish relationship with the local devotees there in the temple and then from there on everything shows up. 
depends on the individual, whatever. You know? So it's go there and establish relationship. Actually, everything starts with relationship. Sure. Shivanzi. Well, are, are you talking about Indian government supporting people In or individuals? People. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to work on that. We need to have these things up on the websites and then it can invite people because we are in the ITH and so if we put these things out there, people can come across it and they will offer support. We really need that support. Thank you. Sure. Would you like? Uh, the support is definitely necessary and uh, the grassroots support is very important. Uh, so there is plenty of opportunities, like for example in Ukraine, as I said, we have uh, food relief programs for those people who are uh, deprived of their homes and everything. So if uh, uh, th this information is there, we are running a campaign to spe specifically help people who are uh, deprived of their, uh, you know, facilities to live and uh, who need just food. So it's there. Everyone can help. Sure. Wonderful. So I would just like to summarize uh, some of the points that came through the presentations that what are the ways, practical ways that we can really reach out. Uh, things like literature. I think literature, the authentic literature in different languages so that people can read them, uh, consume them. Then of course art, culture, music. So that is also, there is tremendous attraction, how we can promote that. Educational programs, structured educational programs, courses for those who are interested. Celebrations, festival celebrations which brings a lot of joy, people, brings people together, and it really uh, amplifies the whole atmosphere. Then of course, uh, somebody is promoting vegetarianism, Ayurveda, uh, and Jyotisha was mentioned. Mandirs, how temples can become the centers of all this learning and culture, along with worship, traditional worship that was mentioned. And I think street religion, how we can actually go to where people are, and then promote it. Uh, Vedic sciences about courses came. The idea of yoga fest came. I think it was briefly mentioned. And we also have done it. So we have a whole day program with Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga and Karma Yoga tracks. And people have different interests. How we can attract them to whichever they feel connected with. How we can present that to them. So I always say that there are different ways of motivating people. Uh, there are out in the world, they say carrot or stick. But we are neither using carrot nor the stick. What we are using is fragrance, a fragrant flower. Anybody who is surrounded by foul odor will be attracted towards something that is sweet smelling, fragrant. And how we can take that near to people so that people automatically get attracted and then they want to take it in. Or people surrounded with darkness, they will seek light. How we can take that light to where people are, so those who are groping in darkness, they will seek and come towards light. Because we are a tradition of seekers and not just believers. How we can attract such people who are seeking and take all these practical things that were mentioned here in an organized way, in a very silent way determined, dedicated way, with full devotion in heart. If you reach out to people, they say that there is no person heartless enough not to respond to our appeal. So I think uh, that is our challenge and how we can organize and put resources. I think that point was very good. 
because without resources, without training our own people to do this, we are not going to be able to do it. So training our own foot soldiers, as I had mentioned earlier, to be able to effectively reach out, to go to people who are either in need or who are ready to seek. So that is uh, what this session was about. Uh, one question to all of you. How are you liking World Hindu Congress so far? How many of you really like what's happening since yesterday? Wonderful. How many of you think that you will want to come the next World Hindu Congress also? Wonderful. How many of you think you will bring another friend and recruit somebody to come to World Hindu Congress? Wonderful. So you will be happy to know that the next World Hindu Congress announcement is already there. When you leave this room outside where the water is there, you can pick one brochure. Please pick only one because they are limited. And then you can go through it and you can already start talking about it to your friends. Thank you very much. Thank you to the panelists for sharing the valuable experience that you have been doing. And thank you everyone for the participation. Namaste.